device called the Osiris D3 is the most controversial skate shoe ever. And I remember when these came out, I really wanted a pair. So finally, 20 years later, I've got a pair. So let's go over what the controversy is about and then cut these in half, unfortunately. I want to actually get a, keep the pair to see what's on the inside and see what all the hype and controversy and everything about this shoe is all about. This video is brought to you by privacy.com. And if you don't know what privacy is, privacy lets you buy things online using virtual cards instead of having to use your real ones, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. And right now, new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on their first purchase. So go to privacy.com slash rose Anvil to sign up today. And we use privacy in the shop fairly often because we're always buying strange stuff from sketchy websites like guillotine supply shops or like weird boots that are really obscure from really sketchy looking websites. And if by chance that data does get stolen, it's not your real information, it's that virtual card you made on privacy.com. But my favorite thing about privacy is you can set up spending limits and you can turn off your virtual cards whenever you want. So if you sign up for a free trial for something and you don't want to remember 30 days from now you need to cancel the, the subscription before it charges you, you can just turn off your card right after, or you can set a spending limit so it never charges your, your real account. And if you know you're not gonna have the time to watch some streaming services for a few months, all you gotta do is turn your card off and there's really no way for them to charge you. And one thing that people really like about privacy is there's no interest, there's no fees, and there's no impact on your credit score. So head to privacy.com slash Rosanville to sign up for your account. And like I said earlier, new customers will automatically get the $5 to spend on your first purchase. Go to privacy.com slash Rosanville and sign up now. Thanks again to privacy.com for sponsoring this video. So now let's go over the shoe information. So the brand is Osiris. The style is the D3 2001s. The color I have is black and white. They weigh one pound, four ounces. They retail for 114, but back in the day they were 129 and they're made in China. So now let's go over the information that we can gather about the shoe before we cut it in half, starting with the upper. And the upper is made from several different types of materials. There's some rubber on here, there's some nylon, there's some plastic, some mesh materials, and the only thing it doesn't have is, is leather. There's no leather anywhere on this. And it looks like there's leather, but it's just a fake leather, unfortunately. But all those materials and the fact that it was the most puffy skate shoe you could buy made this the most iconic skate shoe in the world, in my opinion, at least from that era like the early 2000s era and and some of the other colorways are pretty wild there's there's some good ones we'll put some images up the one i wanted most was the gray and yellow ones those ones are cool i never got them though so maybe one day then if we move to the lining the lining has a few different materials as well around the heel it has this it's a pretty unique material i think it's a it's, it's a higher durability material at the heel because that's where you usually wear your shoes out especially at the heel itself and around the the little collar here and then on the inside, you've got a mesh material that goes all the way through to the outside for breathability, I'm assuming. And then on the inside, you just have a, a little bit lighter weight nylon type material on the, at the, the vamp of the shoe. And then the construction type is a cemented construction where they've taken the upper and glue it onto the midsole and outsole unit. And you can tell that by the, the little remnants of glue that are still around that seam where those two pieces connect. And then as for the insole, if we pull this out, it's a surprisingly cheap insole. It's just a really thin foam insole. There's really nothing else to it. And then underneath you can see there's that lasting board that strobel stitched the upper, just like pretty much all sneakers out there. And then to the midsole, which is another really defining attribute of this shoe. You've got that really thick foam midsole with the full length air unit on the inside. So even more materials. It's, it, it literally is like they combined all the attributes of every sneaker out there including like basketball sneakers and combined it into this one skate shoe and i love it and then you've got the rubber outsole that was molded to that foam and air unit midsole so it's a single unit that's it's not going to delaminate in theory and that's about it for what we know from the outside. So what makes this shoe so controversial? Well, Vice made a video on this topic that's like 15 minutes long and it's really thorough, has uh, interviews with all the people that are in the controversy and it's, it's a really good watch. So I'll put that in the, in the description, but I'm just gonna give you the Cliff Notes version of it. So Osiris was founded in 1996 as a skate shoe brand. And like most skate shoes at the time, they would sign pro skaters and release a shoe that was attached to that pro skater's name. And then in 1999, they released the D3 designed by Osiris's in-house designer, Brian Reed, with the help of Dave Mayhew, the pro skater who was signed by Osiris and whose name was attached to the D3, hence the name D3, Dave. And at its release, it just was received to lukewarm reception. It, you know, it didn't really make that big of a splash until 
2000 when Fred Durst of the Limp Biscuit fame wore them to the VMAs, the MTV Music Awards, and they blew up overnight. So in 2001, to capitalize on that success, they re-released the D3 as the D3 2001, which is the version most people remember and got and were, were drooling over as 12 year old skate, skater boys. And it, and it was that version that really hit that, that skate shop superstardom of the early 2000s and was cemented in skate history. But the real controversy started in 2018 when for, when for some reason puffy skate shoes started to come back into style for a very short amount of time. And at the peak of puffy skate shoes almost coming back, ASAP Rocky released his Under Armour sneaker that pulled a lot of inspiration from the D3s. And this is where it started to get messy because it was so close to the D3. ASAP Rocky wanted the designer of the shoe to be associated with it, which on paper was Dave Mayhew. He was the professional skater that had the name associated with it with all the branding and all the tags and everything said it was designed by Dave Mayhew. So Aesop Rocky had him be a part of the design process. The actual skaters didn't really do a whole lot of the designing process. They had their in-house designers in Brian Reed design the actual shoe with a little bit of inspiration from Dave. So to put it more simply, the, the forward-facing public designer of the shoe was Dave, but the internal designer who did the majority of the work was Osiris's shoe designer, Brian. So when it came to ASAP Rocky attributing the design of the D3 to someone, he attributed it to the person that the majority of the world assumed designed the D3. So all this controversy and all this drama between Osiris and ASAP and Dave and Brian ultimately came down to how shoe collabs are done and designed and people wanting credit for their work or their name. Because it would be like if the guy at Under Armour who really did the design work for ASAP Rocky's shoe got mad because ASAP Rocky was taking credit for the design of the shoe. I don't think it's quite that cut and dry, but it just seems like it's a lot of, it was a lot of drama and controversy um, over just how shoes are designed, especially in 2000. And I think it's a little bit silly, to be honest. So now that you understand the history of the D3s and the controversy and drama behind it, let's cut them in half. Okay, we got them cut in half. Let's see what's on the inside. The shoe is so wild. Look at the ungodly amount of foam in this tongue. It's like two inches of foam. And same with the collar. There's more foam in this collar than every boot I've ever cut apart. And uh, <laughs> I just, I love seeing how much foam is in the in the tongue itself because that was like the whole thing in this era was like how puffy of a tongue can you convince your parents to buy you and you can also see how the tongue was held in place with that little strap down here and those those little mesh port holes for the breathability and you can really now see how thick that foam midsole is it's it's actually a pretty hard foam i was surprised let's do a, a, a durometer test on it real quick 48 to 50 shore a which is a pretty tough foam and we can also see that the air unit does run the entire length of the shoe, but I think it's three separate air units because I popped, as you saw, I popped the three different uh, air units and they all hissed. 
So I'm assuming it's three different air units. And I always thought that this little piece at the bottom here was part of the air unit, but you can see that it's not, which is honestly a, probably a pretty good idea to not have the air unit exposed on the bottom. But I was really surprised at how thick that midsole is. So it's, it's really interesting to see what's inside of this shoe I wanted so badly and tried, my, tried to convince my parents nonstop to buy me when I was 11 years old, but my dad's like, you're not wearing those shoes. Those look absolutely ridiculous. So I never got a pair, but it's, it's cool to see what's on the inside. And I, I like this idea of doing some more of these iconic shoes from the past because it's really interesting. So let me know which shoe you want me to cut apart next or which iconic boot or shoe. And I'm really curious what your experience was with the D3s when you were a kid, if you had a pair. I'm assuming you had a pair. I feel like everyone had a pair. Um, I'm curious if like the air units failed, if they, they weren't good skate shoes, but I can't imagine you have much board feel underneath of this inch and a half of foam and rubber. So thank you so much for everything you guys do. See ya.